Hi, good morning, all of you. Uh, so today we are going to study how to identify and avoid artifacts in atomic force microscopy. Uh, this topic is highly important because of the fact that uh, it is said that uh, many uh, images that we capture in atomic force microscopy, they are full of artifacts. In fact, some people say that over 90% images may be an artifact. So this topic is highly important uh, considering that uh, we tend to make a lot of mistakes. So first we have to understand how to identify uh, the artifacts and what are the primary sources of artifacts in AFM images. Number one, as you know, that it is um, AFM probes. So we'll study that what kind of uh, artifacts can be created in various conditions uh, due to AFM probes. Second problem is with uh, feedback. So as you know that uh, the balloon example, the feedback uh, uh, given by the controller, that controls the uh, fine movements of the scanner, whether the scanner should move up or down when, the, when, it, is, when it traces the topography of the sample. So uh, there is one parameter which is called gain. So gain has sometimes gain is too high. So then it, that can introduce a lot of artifacts in the AFM images. And third, uh, and quite important uh, topic is the scanners. So scanners are uh, piezo uh, uh, tubes. So piezo tubes they have their own uh, artifacts, their own problems. So we'll, we are going to we are going to discuss that. And number four is image processing. So even if you have captured the image nicely. So when you start processing it, uh, when you start doing the image processing while doing the uh, uh, like flattening and other uh, stuff, uh, one may introduce a lot of artifacts even then. So last thing is uh, vibration and other noise. So for example, building vibration can be picked up by the um, images and you can see lot of problems there. The final part is uh, sample type. So your sample can also create lots of artifacts. In fact, uh, all these points are equally important. I would say that even last point sample type creates a lot of problems because if you have bad sample type that can uh, uh, basically uh, create problem for the probe contamination. So probe contamination is linked with the uh, sample type. So one and six, they are linked quite a lot. So let us start uh, with the probe. So I'm going to spend a lot of time with the um, source number one. Uh, so uh, so what, what can happen uh, with the probes actually? The ideas, idea of the probe is you, you would like to uh, have the probe as uh, small as possible and it should represent the forces as close as possible, but it doesn't happen uh, usually that uh, probe is sometimes not nicely correct probe is not as sharp as object being imaged. Uh, so there are several uh, issues. The rule of thumb is that image will accurately reflect the surface structure if the differences between the image of the radius of curvature of the tip is one tenth the radius of the image structure. Okay, so there are there, is, there are two tables which we can uh, quickly cover and uh, so you can see that artifacts, cause, and solution. So, so one of the artifact is basically broadening of features. So you are expecting, for example, DNA uh, uh, width of the DNA around two nanometer, and it doesn't come out as two nanometers. Suppose you know that particle size is around 10 nanometers. So you, you are getting somewhere around 20, 30 nanometer. So what might be the problem? So uh, most of the time, the causes are contamination of the tip and bluntness of the tip and interaction of the sidewall. So sidewall interaction and contamination and bluntness, uh, damage of the tip also is a, the problem. So solution is basically de deconvolution uh, can be done, offline deconvolution. One can use sharpened tip, one can clean the tip using U UV and ozon ozonizer. Uh, at NCL we have this UV ozonizer so that if you have any organic contamination, uh, the ozonization can uh, burn it up. Uh, also, you can use Pirana solution. And uh, another thing is that you can use uh, imaging before and after uh, uh, you know your work is done. So if you use the 
uh, if you image the tip using SEM, scanning electron microscope, before uh, the use and after its use. So any, if you compare the intactness of the probe, so then it's quite a serious uh, stuff. So normally it should be done for every probe, which goes into the uh, reporting of the data into the paper, that you must have the clear idea about its dimensions, and you should have pictures available, high resolution pictures of the probe uh, using SEM before and after use. So that makes uh, certain that uh, the tip doesn't have uh, contamination. It has not been altered during the imaging. Uh, another thing is that use new tip image uh, tip. So uh, there is something called uh, image tip actually. So it's a, you can image tip from the from the, the there is a, a special sample available uh, normally what happens is that you use afm tip to image sample so but uh, there is a sample available we, which is which is i think which is there in our lab so the sample it consists of very sharp spikes so uh, you can use afm sample itself to produce the image of the uh, tip so it is like inverted tip so that can be done uh, so uh, another thing is that deconvolution, deconvolution technique. Deconvolution is sometimes quite hard because there also uh, you need to do you need to have information about the tip radius curvature. Otherwise, it is difficult to deconvolute. So these are the uh, some of the tips which uh, we use, and uh, the other artifacts are deconstruct destructions of destruction of uh, soft surfaces. So many times uh, when you are imaging, you may end up modifying the surface, altering the surface. So especially uh, you may see that uh, you have moved the particles around, particles are dr getting dragged uh, with the sample, um, with the tip. Uh, so that is not good. So you may find that oh, particle was here and when you are scanning the particles are not visible. So that means uh, the force is too high, shear force is too high that you are moving the uh, particles around with the uh, tip. Shadow sometimes appears. For example, you have an anode rod and or some other objects. You might see some kind of a shadow uh, at the opposite side of the movement. So we'll see that it is sometimes because of the scanner uh, control uh, overshoot or creeping of uh, creeping problem of this uh, uh, scanner and uh, there are other problems also. Let's see one by one. So uh, artifacts uh, due to probe can be subdivided into three parts, uh, size of the tip and or uh, of the sample, tip sample angle and sidewall interaction. Uh, probe uh, sample angle is uh, quite, I think one student asked this question in one of the uh, Park Scientific's uh, uh, lecture that uh, if you have uh, one uh, pit, with the 90 degree side walls, how can you uh, make sure that you are actually uh, measuring the bottom of that pit? So uh, there, this is quite, uh, th that was quite tricky question. So I'm going to answer that question in my slides. See, all these things uh, take time. So it's not like you can finish it quite fast. So it needs a lot of uh, focus. Uh, these questions are quite serious. So. Uh, that question uh, raised by a student was very serious because it's not that easy that you can uh, measure the depth of a vertical tip, vertical pit actually. So it's not easy. And how will you know that you have reached to the, uh, to the uh, depth through the bottom? And the side walls uh, always, side wall of the uh, tip as well as side wall of the pit, they both interact and that creates basically the uh, convoluted image of uh, that pit. So uh, as you can see in the bold font, I, AFM probe ideally should be perpendicular to the uh, sample surface. Solving this problem is achieved by adjusting the angle between probe and sample uh, uh, so that they are perpendicular. So conical tips are not very uh, good. So angle should be as uh, large as uh, possible. Uh, okay, so 
so uh, you can see that uh, for some examples are there uh, so if you see uh, it's a very sharp uh, angle here and uh, if you take a, a probe uh, which is which has got see cantilever is not held uh, like this uh, you know horizontally so it is at certain angle you can see that it is always at certain angle so this angle can be changed uh, see one way is that you modify the tip itself you take it sharp another another way is that you modify this angle you keep the tip same but you tilt this actually this can be done by the uh, side screws so if you see that if if this tip starts moving uh, this way and uh, you can see that uh, it will uh, interact with the side wall and finally you are uh, getting this asymmetric sh shape so when it, this tip basically goes other side so this this side uh, is likely to be imaged properly but this side will be uh, the feature will look slightly broad so uh, that that has to be uh, checked actually so although you can notice that the vertical resolution is quite nice but this this way you this side you can see some convolution effect because the tip uh, is, is scanning from this direction so it's always good that you scan both ways so uh, you can see that this is the typical shape of the af tip uh, and cantilever relative to the surface and this is typical angle 12 degree mm -hmm. uh, next one uh, AFM line artifacts because of the interaction of the side wall of the tip with the tall uh, uh, surface uh, structures. So it is similar to this. Uh, so this is basically uh, similar to this. So what you see, uh, this kind of a feature uh, is visible uh, here. So you got it right. So this is the actual image and this is just a cartoon. So you can see this. This is kind of like a shadow, and this 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 is visible here. Okay. So this is because of the sidewall interaction. Okay. Because this these uh, sidewall starts interacting with this, so then you get uh, this kind of a uh, um, shadow kind of uh, uh, problem. So this is quite common. Don't think that it won't happen in your sample. So you can see this, and you can always check the notes uh, how to fix it. <clears throat> So uh, these uh, this is a this is a test pattern. Uh, okay, so you uh, many times in AFM labs you have test pattern and uh, that is used for calibration as well as checking the uh, tape readiness. Uh, so it has got both what uh, you know pits uh, pits etc. So you can see that the pits are not, uh, uh, you can see they're like slanted that they're at an angle, they should be rectangular. It's, you can see they're uh, curved here uh, at one side, okay? So this is another problem because of the vertical sidewall, this, uh, you know, this is quite uh, uh, sharp. Uh, so as I mentioned that it is good idea to have a scanning electron microscopy image of uh, various uh, probes so these are some of the standard uh, probes so <clears throat> so a is basically standard silicon oscillating uh, mode probe uh, which we use for uh, tapping mode imaging and this one is a uh, super super sharp uh, silicon probe and uh, which is sharpened with electrochemical edge so that can be done in the laboratory you can etch it uh, in the lab also. So you take one tip and then you carefully design an electrochemical cell. So you can easily etch uh, electrochemically, uh, so you can produce a sharper probe. So then you can characterize it also. It's not like uh, you should, that because you have altered the probe, so you have to uh, take the SEM picture in order to, uh, you know, look at the dimensions of the probe. And uh, this one is, uh, high aspect ratio probe sharpened with iron milling so this can be done in the uh, in by you by user also so it's very easy process third one you can if you have a dual beam a scanning electron microscope i think i taught about that that uh, one beam is electron beam uh, for imaging purposes and another beam is gallium beam gallium ion beam positive ion beam so you can uh, use the a gallium beam and you can sharpen it it's very easy. So suppose your sample requirement is like that. So you don't need to buy uh, 
uh, spend like you know thousands and thousands of rupee, rupees to um, buy a uh, super special uh, high f spec ratio probe you can make it actually easily uh, you can modify a blunt tip uh, uh, right there in the dual uh, ion beam milling machine and advantage is that uh, while you are doing the etching uh, you know you have you have the image also um, because you are doing in situ inside scanning electron microscope um, many people also modify uh, by attaching carbon nanotube so this can also be done uh, in the lab itself so there are processes that you can take carbon nanotube and you can attach uh, with the probe of course you can buy all these things in the market so but i don't suggest buying it uh, students should be able to easily make it hmm? okay so another example so this uh, presentation is full of uh, uh, such examples so you can see that uh, the example number a so radius of tip is much smaller than the radius of object being uh, imaged so the artifact is minimized so you can see that here uh, the artifact this radius is quite large uh, then this radius suppose you imagine a sphere here at the end of the tip so this radius uh, of curvature is quite smaller than uh, this object so you practically have to uh, artifact uh, but if they are uh, in comparison to each other so you can see that if the object is much smaller then you can see that uh, there is a significant amount of uh, artifacts uh, um, you can see and if the height of the object uh, is much larger uh, in comparison to the uh, tip so you can see that you have this uh, side wall uh, effect which you saw it here so mostly it happens for the bacterial uh, bacterium cells so that's why i know it because our lab has got a lot of uh, this imaging done so uh, you know we have most of the time we never face but sometimes we face this problem so bacterial uh, cells are quite large in nature and quite rough so you can imagine this as a vector and uh, so then you will have a problem so uh, so you one should have rough estimate of uh, the height of the uh, object being measured it should not be too rough for the uh, probe otherwise you will have a problem with the side wall so you have to measure the you should have some idea about the tip and then sample so it's otherwise you will have the artifacts actually so another example is uh, it's a similar example that uh, if you have i think this was the question which was asked by the student so you can see that uh, you almost uh, image the uh, side wall problem so you see it's like an inverted probe actually. it's like a probe you are probing the probe itself you can see the convolution is like uh, convolution of the probe obviously you are able to touch the almost touch the bottom but uh, the side walls are not image uh, rather than uh, tracing rectangular pit, you are tracing a triangular pit actually similarly uh, if it is a spherical particle you can see the height is measured nicely but uh, these lateral dimensions are uh, broadened actually hmm? so this these are the problems which one should avoid for these reasons, these artifacts will be pre predominant in the images of nanoparticles, including proteins or DNA, as well as images of large particles such as bacteria. I already mentioned that. So, uh, so suppose you have a spike uh, kind of thing. This is the tip, and this is spike. So, suppose you are measuring the spike, you can see that it is like invert. Uh, so, this is one way you can see this is quite intelligent. So, any problem becomes the solution also. Uh, any problem becomes a uh, let me just look at the people who are let me do some monitoring of the people who are So, uh, if you see uh, carefully, uh, if you have object uh, this sharp, you can see uh, you are uh, in fact uh, imaging the tip itself. 
okay so this problem becomes a opportunity uh, that i can make a sample with these kind of spikes these kind of needles if you have these kind of needles uh, on on your tip itself so that is basically you are imaging the tip so it's so so nice okay so you can see that so you don't need sem to image the uh, tip okay so another example is uh, this is spherical particles and you can see that uh, side walls are uh, broadened out here and this uh, sphere doesn't look like sphere here so you have to be careful uh, with uh, this kind of uh, measurement uh another problem is uh, uh see this is afm uh, image acquired with a pyramidal uh, silicon nitride uh, tip which is used in contact mode and this one is uh, image acquired with a conical etched silicon tip uh, which is used in tapping mode so this is etched tip okay you can do chemical etching as i mentioned uh, you can do that in your own lab uh, so there is a sharp difference between this tip and uh this tip so uh, the both are contact uh, images uh, but though uh, the silicon tip is used uh, you can use tapping mode tip for uh, contact mode but contact mode tip cannot be used for tapping mode please note that bar shape uh, tips can be used for contact mode uh, though the spring constant is quite large but vice versa is not true so you can't uh, resonate the uh, v shape probe okay so both the images are on the same scale and in the same surface orientation in both the cases when the sample was rotated the orientation of the surface feature did not change uh, clearly the tip shape is convoluted into so this is a very good indicator that one of the artifacts that you when you change the orientation of the surface the su uh, surface feature should not should not change ideally okay uh, uh oh no ideally they should change i'm sorry they should change because you are rotating the sample if they don't change that means it's artifact if they if you are changing if you're rotating the specimen and the image is uh, also getting rotated that means uh, it is fine okay this is one of the check and if uh, the features do not uh, rotate by the angle which you have rotated that means they are problem created by the tip itself sometimes tip get blunt i'm going to give you more examples of uh, this particular problem yes uh, sir uh, as you said that uh, in case of uh, spherical shape samples we cannot uh, exactly image it as spherical but uh, if we uh, change the angle since we if if we know before taking afm that it is a spherical shape then uh, if we change the uh, uh, angle of the tip and uh, try to measure that then would it help or it would not help hey, yes good question so i'm going to uh, give you uh, this example let me see yes so for example uh, you can see that if the radius of curvature of the tip is uh, 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 smaller than the radius of curvature of the uh, particle here particle is still bigger so then then you won't have any problem if the radius of curvature is small for example radius of curvature is around 10 nm and if your particle is around 20, 20 nm then there is no problem in fact in fact i'm uh, you ask this question uh, so there are specialized uh, probes available which we call super sharp and you can you can etch it in the dual beam scm also to make them see it depends upon cost see the normally the cheapest probe available they are not uh, they are designed just to give you some idea about the roughness but if you if you have a specialized uh, purposes see afm uh, physics doesn't have any problem physics can give you ultra high resolution i have shown you the molecular picture also that is not a problem so uh, what is the problem basically the quality of uh, uh, tip so more money you throw in more effort you uh, give to the quality of the probe then you get that quality actually that's basically as simple as that you you throw in the right quality and you will get the right image so physics doesn't have any um, uh, block physics is not denying you to get the uh, you know exact uh, dimensions of the nanosphere which you are trying to image it is basically tip characterization that matters uh, a lot uh, 
so I, I so you can see that here the problem is that uh, I was showing you the example. So here you can see that this this sphere is quite large in comparison to the uh, this uh, tip. So sidewall interaction is leading to normally we, our objects are not that large. So the sidewall is leading to this kind of a convolution. So one has to be very careful uh, with any microscopy, any instrument actually, any instrument. So if most of the time, as I mentioned that if, if suppose you do not go through this seriously, uh, then people measure something and they report in the paper and paper get published and, uh, and, 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 and you know the problems actually. So it's my responsibility that uh, I should be, uh, I should make you, in fact, I have a presentation on uh, electron microscopy artifacts also, which I didn't teach because of lack of time. Maybe I'll do that. But how electron microscopy can introduce artifacts. Uh, so uh, another problem is, uh, for example, uh, uh, this. So for example, if you have very high features, okay, uh, taller than three micron, then uh, in fact, not just the tip sidewall, even the cantilever can start uh, uh, interacting. So this is another problem. So uh, the feature should not be too tall, actually, that your cantilever, uh, you know, it start like hanging, uh, you know, it start, it's, it get trapped here. So for that, you need to take even a high aspect ratio uh, probe. So depending upon your features, you it's better that you take that kind of uh, uh, probe. Uh, how to correct tip indu induced broadening? Uh, so as I said, that one is one option is that AF AFM tip characterization sample. So uh, it has got like sharp needles mostly uh, or some kind of a conical shape so you can characterize the tip and if you have correct if you have characterized the tip then you can feed that into the software and that uh, does the deconvolution actually these are triangular pyramid kind of a sharp uh, objects which can do the tip imaging actually tip characterization sample mm -hmm. use high aspect ratio again and again uh, this is the uh, uh, suggestion that uh, one should use this kind of a tip, which has got a very sharp, uh, uh, you can see that uh, tip coming out of uh, entire thing, conical thing. So then you can uh, trace the side walls uh, quite nicely. Uh, here you can see that angle also has to be, uh, angle is also important. So you can see that this is quite close to what uh, uh, you want to measure the reason of interest, but you can see here is symmetry because of the angle. So if you, if the, if, it, if the, this tip is attached uh, at the same angle, then you will have a problem. If it is uh, attached at uh, a different angle, you can see that now you are slightly symmetric because of uh, this alpha angle. So this is, this should be tilted considering the, uh, this angle alpha, this, should, this has to be compensated, compensated. So this angle uh, plus alpha, okay, um, and you can see it here. Is so this tip is not going like this? Uh, this is this should this not be perpendicular. Angle, excuse me, sir. Yes. Me. So this alpha angle cannot be changed during the measurement, or it can also. Oh, you can do that. You can do that. Right. Possible. I'll go back. Just a moment. Yeah, it is possible. Just a moment. Thank you. So there are uh, these adjust three adjustment screws on the microscope that allows user to adjust this angle. So normally it is kept at uh, 12 degree, but you can change it. Yes. So there are this provision is there, so you can do that easily, very easily. Okay, and you can use it. I have not used this uh, deconvolution software because I don't trust it. Uh, unless I have, uh, I would like to, uh, personally speaking, I would like to put more effort on the tip characterization and tip uh, sharpening rather than uh, using the deconvolution uh, software later on. That's, I'm not, I don't feel comfortable with that because you're applying another software and then software can make ants to elephant, apples to, uh, you know, oranges. So I don't like too much of mathematics. So anyway, but uh, for the sake of completeness, I'm showing that it is possible, but I don't, I don't like this. 
I would like to do it using hardware rather than software. First, if hardware is not able to do that, then I will go to the software because software is again image manipulation. Any software trick is basically image manipulation. You are manipulating the image. You are not close to the reality. So you can see that there are very nice uh, probes available, but slightly expensive. Uh, but I would say that, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, you can make these kind of probes easily in your own lab. It's not difficult. You can just make four or five of them and keep them very easily. Okay, next topic is not just the aspect ratio or uh, side wall or angle, but tips are fine. Okay, you took the nice uh, tip, best of the tip, but what if uh, the tip, uh, the right kind of a tip, your ideal dream tip get uh, blunt. Uh, I took the example of a pencil or they get dirty or they get broken into uh, and one tip becomes two tip actually. So uh, let us start from the uh, blunt probe. So uh, blunt, uh, if suppose you started with a very sharp probe and the tip became become blunt, so then uh, you can have this problem. So for the uh, protruded uh, particles, you can have this convolution. And for the valleys, you can have, uh, this can be the imaging problem. So ideally it should be uh, sharper, but you can get uh, the problem with the blunt probes. Okay, you can read this. Uh, yeah, this is, this is nice that, uh, for example, measuring, but still you get the same height. If you see this, uh, height is not a problem. Lateral uh, resolution is affected. You get exactly the same height. So still uh, you have, so it's mentioned here that suppose the diameter is two nanometer. Uh, so, a, the, so it is normal to find the feature in the AF image, which has got two nanometer height, but 10 to 20 nanometer width. Now you know the problem. So we have to decouple the, horizontal and vertical resolutions. So this is uh, from the brand new uh, probe, the top view and uh, this gold film scanned by tapping mode. This looks good actually. So you can see that uh, uh, this conical probe uh, is either dirty or you can see it's a flat actually, or it has got blunt. You can see this something is sticking or we do not know or it is uh, like there is a flat reason. So if you use this kind of a tip, I have seen it in my lab. I will show you some examples from my own lab, uh, some artifacts. So uh, you can see this, uh, suppose uh, there is a dirt on the tip and something has got stuck. Suppose you are imaging gold nanoparticles. And uh, so those particles got stuck on the tip and they're getting dragged. So basically you are measuring, uh, rather than measuring D, you are measuring, uh, a plus D, this is the distorted image. So you can see that. Uh, so if you get similar, similar uh, 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 features, so don't get too excited. They are not, uh, it's not like your nature uh, next image, which, is, which you're going to publish in nature uh, journal. So that has to be thrown in the nature. Okay, that has to, image has to be thrown. So many times students get excited. Oh, sir, see, we, we have to publish it in nature. Wow, so nicely arranged particles are here. Okay, so, but they are mostly artifacts. So you can, you can see that. So as I mentioned that quickest way to check is that you just rotate this and at certain angle while you are doing the imaging. And if it does rotate, then you're, you can publish it in nature, but otherwise, you have to throw it in the nature. Hmm? You have to recycle it. So similar problems here. You can see there are plenty of examples. Uh, there is one sample which was imaged by a sharp trip. You can see various kinds of uh, nice particles, various dimensions. But if you uh, take a severely damaged probe, you can see that there are similar, similar structures. You can see that same, same copies. So that means it is badly damaged. You can see large structure and then there are three dots, four dots. So yes, this is, I think from my own uh, lab. Yes, uh, this example is from my own lab. And uh, again, I told you that student uh, got too excited. Oh, wow. Sir, it will nature in nature. I said, yes, nature will go to nature. So you can see that uh, this is, uh, Basically, these are uh, 
what you're looking at is the tip this is not a central image this is actually the tip if you see that i'll show you this is exactly uh, this kind of a triangle okay when you chop it off you get uh, something like this so be very careful that uh, uh, what you're measuring so these are all blunt uh, tip images so again this is the dirty tip you can see the height and deflection images here you can see sharply this this is basically like inverted uh, blunt uh, pyramidal uh, uh, or whatever the probe uh, shape was i am not sure right now because it's very old uh, image so uh, again another example that uh, you have a flattened tip so then this is scan direction so you get this kind of distorted image these are all artifacts you can go them you know go to this thing uh, carefully so another uh, example is uh, so this is these are two images of the same sample so left side side image is produced by using sharp probe and uh, right side image is produced by the blunt probe and you can see the obvious differences here uh this is test pattern uh, as i mentioned that uh, you can buy uh, test patterns uh, from the vendors which are usually um, uh, different kinds of uh, test patterns squares and other things and they're calibrated so vendor can tell you that okay these test patterns are uh, this dimensions and if you do not get those dimensions that means uh, you are in a problem so if you get uh, these kind of uh, images that means uh, that is blunt probe that is another way that you can image the test pattern you can you can actually create a test pattern you don't need to buy a test pattern i would like to encourage that so you can do lithography photolithography or something so if you have a master uh, mask and uh, if you get it from somewhere with very, very good dimensions so you can make uh, some structure or using pdms and then soft lithography and then you can uh deposit some gold and you can make your own uh, pattern uh, in fact uh, once it is made then you can make copies of that uh, if you have a master copy then it is easy so it's it's good i would encourage to uh, make your own standard uh, in the lab okay so these are other examples several examples are there so artifacts due to contamination or broken tip repeating patterns in the images you can see that these patterns are getting repeated we have seen it all we see it all the time you can see there are two tips actually and there is some dirt here so this is a real life actually when you use the microscopy so you can see that if you if you image with this tip you can see two triangles sitting side by side two three triangles so that means this this is also imaging and this is also imaging so you so it is similar to this so if you have a broken tip so one uh, uh, sphere spherical particle will be shown as two uh, distorted images uh, with the separation between the tip so this is because of the separation between the tip so you get twins actually hmm. so image of vesicles measured by a dirty tip so this is badly broken and contaminated tip so all kinds of things you can see dna molecules uh, which is imaged and with the broken tip you can see the false twin uh, close to that you can see that there are if you zoom it uh, you can see two uh, uh, dna uh, sitting side by side so that means definitely it is because of the uh, this kind of effect okay so uh, one news i would like to share to all of you uh, i am very excited about that i uh i just place uh, an order for let me stop sharing it see uh, i spent almost uh, 4000 rupees for uh, on you guys so don't expect something is coming in your bill box okay uh, the device is basically uh, i'll be able to uh, it's a digital uh, pen okay around 3700 3800 so i can draw the structures very nicely so monday lecture will be uh, facilitated by <laughs> that new device so just now i ordered because i was thinking thinking i thought that let me uh, 
spend this money so i'm i'm not i don't think that ncl is going to refund me for that i don't think so but it doesn't uh, i was looking for more expensive one larger ones larger size like 7000 rupees but i thought that uh, it's not required and uh, i have this lenovo yoga uh, also you can see that uh, this laptop so i have never used this because i don't like windows but this folds like this and uh, with that pen i can write on uh, this also but that pen comes with the uh, its own uh, pad uh, which is quite nice but uh, same pen i can use to scribble here so i will try first some dummy classes okay and then i will ex after that probably monday i will be able to uh, draw very nicely so probably my teaching qualities will be as real as the classroom lecture okay so i am trying my best effort to put uh, richness into the courses and uh, again you can see that if it is chipped probe we will get problem uh as image of impurities uh, on afm tips you can see more and more problems here some examples some more examples okay, similar examples surface contamination example so you can go through all those things again surface contamination examples surface contamination example so this is quite common uh, problem in imaging if uh, these kind of lines starts appearing that means you, the tip is contaminated some particle while imaging actually what happens that suddenly you start getting this that means and students do not know what what's got, what has gone wrong so um, uh, normally after a certain time uh, these particles get dislodged from the tip automatically uh, so normally you get rid of that because the adhesion of uh, adhesivity of um, certain uh, particles uh, and your tip is not always that good so you are lucky that most likely these particles are going to get rid of uh, the tip uh, automatically after some scanning so you can see that uh, after some time you go back to the normal uh, images here okay so you got nice image then you got some contamination and then you got rid of contamination you get back to the original quality image here also you can see some streaks uh, because of the and this is very very common actually this problem these two problems are i mean you can see that uh, almost uh, if you capture 10 images uh, five images will have this problem this, this is so common actually especially in the uh, contact mode typing mode may not have this problem because there are less chances of uh, contamination of tapping mode but contact mode uh, the problems are there so next topic is uh, feedback related i give example uh, of feedback related noise uh, uh, yes yesterday in one of the images i pointed out see that this is noise these are ripples high frequency and all kinds of things so when uh, you are uh, chasing the set point too close like pid readings are too tight your pid uh, settings your gain is too high that means then um, you start getting uh, this kind of noise uh, like waves kind of uh, you can see the wavy pattern in the images um, so you have to be careful so that is very easy to uh, catch feedback loop related you can easily identify now i am sure that you can uh, by this much uh, uh, teaching you can identify it that okay this is probe related problem now uh, with this for the next uh, round you will be able to uh, fix the problem that okay these are feedback problem and let us fix them so uh, the scan speed should be uh, slow it should not be too fast and uh, if the scan speed for example you are scanning uh, usually at 2 hertz uh, scan speed means left to right and right to left okay one hertz is basically for example uh, in one second you go you complete one cycle uh, this way and that way sometimes you measure uh, three hertz sometimes students uh, increase the scanning speed three hertz means these lines basically three lines per second so that you get fast image sometimes students really say oh let me get uh, uh, let me increase the 
scanning speed because AFM is a slow technique. Okay, you might have some people who might have done AFM. You might notice that uh, AFM is done uh, better. Best done is basically slow. It's like you know uh, analogy is basically you are uh, sitting in a hot air balloon again, and then you are uh, going over uh, Mahabaleshwar and Panchgani hills, and uh, and um, suppose uh, the rider is in in a hurry. And riders start pressing uh, the balloons. Oh, I need to really uh, scan these hills uh, too fast. And you're rushing, rushing, and you will end up uh, crashing into one of the hills that you do not want. So same thing happens. And uh, because you may not be, you may go actually, suppose you would see one tall peak coming in front of you when you're riding in the balloon. And uh, because you're going so fast that you won't, you will not be able to uh, control your settings of hot air that you can go safely. Uh, you can basically maintain your 50 meter distance. Of course, you can maintain some like five meter, 10 meter, 10 meter, 10 meter. Sorry. So you are basically too, too close to the hill. You may not crash, but you may see a lot of jerk actually and noise uh, in your uh, like same same problem with the. Uh, flying aircraft, same logic applies everywhere. You have a set point and then, so the tracking has to be uh, good quality. So you can see that this is the uh, this is trace and retrace curve. And uh, uh, so you can see a lot of noise here in the trace retrace. And uh, you most of the time in AFM, you get this kind of uh, signal. Uh, and uh, the students, what they do, they first look at this signal. If it is clean, then only they go for image capturing. So this is very. This is the first part of uh, which is checked uh, in the okay uh, in the AFM. So you can see that here uh, these are uh, quite identical, but here you can see that there is a problem. So. Uh, you can see here also there is a poor tracking trace and retrace scans do not overlap each other they should overlap like this one they exactly overlap hmm? but here they don't overlap trace retrace means you are going left to right and right to left hmm? got it so they should ideally uh, match so that happens when you are going too fast or your gain is not proper uh, so these are the examples of poor tracking so you can see that uh, these are the examples here. So uh, with sharp slopes, poor tracking may result into overshoot, giving rise to the comet tails in the image. As I mentioned that uh, this comet tail kind of uh, features, uh, let me show you this moment. Very interesting actually. Yeah, this is a comet tail because you can see that this is overshooting. You are basically overshoot, like you are in a balloon and uh, uh, you uh, see a, a valley and a sharp slope and you're trekking too poor that you cannot, uh, you, even if you have uh, see, you have gone past that uh, sharp, sharp slope, but you are still tracking uh, with the old way. You're not able to track too closely. So then you can get this comet tail actually. Same problem with the balloonist also. So left on the left, the gains are set high enough for the screen rate, the tracking is good. So gains should not be too low or too high. Okay. So if it is gain is too high, then you get this noise. You can see that. If gain is too low, then you get this comet kind of a thing that you are not tracking too close to the surface. Or if you're tracking too much, so then this ripple is very, these, these things are very, very common. I had one student, I want, I don't want to name, uh, very smart. I think she's a professor now in a, in a U.S. university, uh, professor of physics. Um, so um, she uh, got uh, a couple of these kind of images when we were new. And then we realized that uh, it was long back, almost uh, how many years back, 12 years, 13 years back. Uh, that we used to get consistently, uh, all our images used to get this kind of a noise. So these things are practical problem and uh, students, they face it and sometimes they do not know and they say that they think, they will think that, oh, this is normal. But th that was because of the gain too high. If you see these kind of ripples and gain too low, that means these kind of a distortion. Hmm? 
So PID setting has to be very, very good. Uh, impact of artifacts created by not having a PID parameter fully optimized, but it is the same problem. Okay, you can see that similar thing. Now scanner, scanners are uh, a very important part of the uh, 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 game and scanners, they have their own mind actually. They have their own problem. They have the aging, hysteresis, uh, non-linearity. Uh, so scanners are basically uh, cut into two, two parts. One is for X and Y and another is for jet direction. They're highly non-linear. For example, when you apply uh, zero to 20 volt and uh, the scanner is supposed to uh, move uh, uh, 10 micron. So if you apply uh, 22 volt instead of 220 volt, 10 times lower voltage. So a scanner will not move uh, uh, one micron instead of 10 micron. So I repeat it that if you apply 220 volt and the scanner moves 10 micron, if you apply 22 volt, the scanner will not move one micro. So that is because of high non-linearity, high non-linearity. So how do you take care of that? So because suppose you are uh, zooming in, suppose you first, first you took a scan size, 10 microns, 10 micron uh, image you have captured. Now you're interested in one micron by one micro. After that, you want to zoom uh, further, 500 by 500 nanometer. Then you want to zoom even 100 nanometer by 100 nanometer. So how are you sure that, uh, uh, the scanner is uh, following your orders and it will show you the exact dimensions. It's not that easy. Okay. So that's why these courses are very important. So how do you take care of that? So you have to calibrate in each uh, lens uh, scale. So for example, uh, scanner should be calibrated separately for from zero to uh, 500 nanometer and zero to one micron, zero to 10 micron. So those calibration should be done uh, uh, very nicely in different length scale because the calibration which is done for zero to 10 micron may not hold uh, good for other ranges because it's not linear relationship and uh, second problem that uh, when you apply uh, uh, so scanner is, is like you know overshoot uh, and undershoot it's like you know spring actually so when you apply uh, some voltage and uh, suppose you apply 220 volt and uh, scanner is supposed to move 10 micron and you immediately apply 220 volt okay so it will overshoot and uh, and then when you uh, reduce the voltage from 220 to zero it may not uh, trace the same path it may it it, is, it always has hysteresis for example magnetic material for example magnetic materials uh, you apply a magnetic field and uh, i will let me use the whiteboard so uh, magnetic stresses all of you know that uh, uh, so this is h and this is m so this is one axis Monday, I will be able to uh, do it uh, in a better way. So, uh, magnetic stress is basically like uh, this. Wow, I'm drawing so nicely. I didn't expect that I'll be able to draw this much. So, for example, uh, once you increase uh, field, then magnetization goes up. And when you go to this maximum and then you uh, reduce the field, so you uh, you don't follow this path but instead you follow this path you follow this path okay so that problem is there so suppose uh, this is not magnetic field but this is indeed your piezo so for example this is your 220 volt uh, 200 volt let's say 200 volt and uh, this is 10 micron so when you apply this 200 volt so it has suppose moved uh, 10 micron now when you reduce it uh, to, if you reduce this uh, to uh, zero then uh, this may still uh, ideally this is supposed to move uh, here 
right back to zero but it doesn't it has some creep so it keeps on moving 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 and then you know it's a it's a problem actually so uh, so ideal standards are not uh, not not the way you want them to be okay so so this is called uh, scanner hysteresis thermal drifts are very serious uh, for example uh, when you are heating uh, um, like polymer people uh, they are interested uh, in looking at the polymer properties uh, at different temperatures in at liquid nitrogen temperature or at uh, higher temperature 100 degree centigrade 200 degree centigrade because most of the application for example you when you make this plastic ball a plastic bottle so those those uh, you know uh, application requires some testing of the polymer at uh, for crystallization and all kinds of things so if your so your scanner got was calibrated at uh, room temperature ideal temperature like 25 degree centigrade but if you are doing high temperature or low temperature measurement so obviously uh, scanner uh, temperature also varies quite a lot so then uh, your calibration will become garbled you know it is no no longer true so that is the problem with the which is there with the scanner drift uh, thermal drift actually uh, another problem is scanner creep which we have already discussed that it is related to hysteresis itself that uh, if you apply voltage all 220 voltage if you apply it uh, too soon then it will move in uh, in like uh, creep is basically like you know creep uh, you know like you know you it moves in uh, phases it will move suddenly and then it will move slowly it will keep on moving uh, it's like a you know uh, okay that kind of a behavior that um, you know that there is one insect which basically moves like in rainy season it, it makes a coil and then it moves like this moves like this so it's like that so that behavior cross coupling is basically you are trying to uh, move in x direction but there is a cross talking and the voltage uh, it ends up uh, because uh, these ten, these demi, uh, this crystal uh, or uh, is a ceramic whether it is crystal or polycrystalline so sometimes these grains get coupled and uh, there may be some movement in another direction also or uh, there is some maybe there may be some voltage leak so that's a problem actually um, so let us first dis discuss uh, about uh, non linearity so scanner artifacts results from nonlinearity in the horizontal and vertical movement both actually vertical overshoot because of the control system scanner drift piezoelectric scanner moves the tip uh, across the surface in xy direction and z direction it is critical that scanner is moving linearly with time and that it is calibrated if the scanner is not moving linearly uh, features on the one side of the image will appear smaller than the other side of this image uh, so for example this is your uh, these are the features which you are trying to image so because of the scanner nonlinearity the features may look uh, narrower from at one side and then the other side so it has to be fixed uh, so you can see uh, x y nonlinearity uh, so the features looks uh, distorted this is basically a test uh, sample uh, when you buy afm you get uh, free uh, these test samples so okay so these kind of uh, grids are uh, available so uh, most afm packages come with the standard grid that can be used to check the linearity and accuracy so these samples are uh, supplied with the afm so you can check whether you have this problem or not uh, this is done once in a year or once in a six month once in a two year depending upon the use if you are using it too much then you should use it too often and then uh, there are software tools you can fix this problem there, this problem is can be easily fixed by you. but you should be aware that it should not happen that you are getting all kinds of uh, uh, artifacts and then you are publishing it actually with the artifact i mean that's the uh, scope of this uh, teaching that uh, of course you won't be doing it by yourself some operator may be doing it and sometimes if you do it uh, if you do your own measurements uh, using AFM on your own sample, so that is very good. Then your responsibility is even more. But if you have given the sample to some other lab and you are getting the data, uh, that doesn't get rid, uh, uh, 
you from your responsibility of your own data so because uh, you have to really check that these artifacts are not uh, given to you because other fellow may not bother actually okay uh, so you can see that in height measurements also there can be nonlinearity so either ideally it should be flat but if you see this blue line it is not flat so here is a problem so relationship between actual z height and measured z height is like this so actual z height is this but you are measuring it falsely hmm? so uh, normally with linear response uh, one should follow this curve and suppose you took the calibration one point calibration and then you drew the line so you are expecting like this so for example you move uh, you applied some voltage and uh, this is uh, but your your basically scanner has moved like non linearly it is reaching to the same point your calibration point but it is following same different path it doesn't follow this this path so for example you are measuring this height so this height will be measured uh, here not here got it this is the distortion this is the artifact if you measure here then obviously you will say oh, wow i calibrated at this point and uh, i measured this height as this height but uh, but no uh, real life uh, samples even if you make the piezo ceramic uh, if you are a chemistry student if you synthesize lead zircon and titanate in your lab and if you apply a bias voltage you can see you can test it in your own lab whether your piezo ceramic in synthesize in your own lab uh, moves uh, linearly it will never move um, that is with the physics actually okay so suppose you apply 10 volt and if it moves 10 nanometer 20 volt uh, and if you apply 20 volt it will not move 20 nanometer that's a problem so it has to be calibrated at multiple points somewhere here 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 so that you go close to the actual curve solution scanners must be calibrated for various height features to cover a broad range okay so then you can have uh, uh, better uh, 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 another is basically a scanner bow which is very very common and you see almost all the time you know this is so common uh, this can be easily fixed uh, by software offline software and i will teach you maybe another another class on monday uh, when we do the image processing so suppose this is your sample you have this uh, rough surface and this is your substrate and so your scanner is uh, typically a tube piezo tube and which is uh, fixed from one uh, side and it is uh, moving uh, at the other side you got it so when you apply the voltage so it is fixed from the side so it is it will move like a bow it will not move uh, like a linear line it cannot move because it's held it is fixed here so it is all it will always move like this so if you have some uh, small features so they will not be visible so suppose you get you can see this tiny tiny particles so uh, because this bow you can see that this image you see the color problem this is darker here and this is lighter from the in the middle and then it get darker uh, at the side so if you uh, look at the intensity profile Uh, or high profile so this is 0 to 20 nanometer and uh, this is xy dimension 0 to 10 micron image so you can see that uh, it looks like a hump and there are minor minor peaks which are because of your suppose you draw this line and you can see that this is your particle somewhere here this is your particle so uh, you're not able to see this kind of feature here so what you do actually it's like you know holding a paper and you you can flatten it easily by software so you can reduce this background you can fit this uh, background and you can flatten it up and you get very nicely uh, your images so this can be easily fixed in one shot and this is a known known problem actually this is a known problem and you can see this easily in the images because it will look images will look darker at two sides hmm? so effect of scanner creep scanner creep happens because when you are applying the voltage dimensional change happens in two two steps one first step takes takes place in less than millisecond ki jaldi se voltage badhate ho to ek tarah jaldi se wo uska dimension change hoga scanner ka but then second one step is taking its own long 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 time so that is called slow movement is called creep creep uh, movement hmm? so so one should not uh, 
uh, when you try to zoom, uh, uh, see for example, you have taken um, large scan, large area scan. Suppose you were imaging like 50 micron by 50 micron, and immediately you came to 50 micron, you started imaging like you know, one micron by one micron. Then you will have this uh, creep problem. So from 100 micron, for example, from 50 micron to 50 micron, you should uh, scan first uh, 20 micron by 20 micron, then 10 micron by 10 micron, one micron, then slowly, slowly reduce. So scanner, it's, uh, you know, just think about scanner, actually. If you get connected with the scanner, how it works, so then you will not apply, you will not reduce the voltage suddenly that it doesn't get time to, you know. Uh, so it, it has its own nonlinear features. So it's, it, is, it is like a history, it has a hysteresis loop. So you have to re be really careful. Uh, about uh, this aspect. So otherwise you will have this kind of uh, problems, okay? When suppose you're measuring this kind of uh, vertical lines. So this is the problem uh, because of scanner creep. Okay, so uh, this happens because as a function of time, you applied the voltage uh, here as a function of times too fast and then uh, piezo movement takes its own time. Actually. Hmm? So for example, you applied this voltage, uh, suppose you were at uh, 20 volt and then you apply 220 volt, suddenly here, this is the flag. You applied as a function of time, now you're not changing. So ideally, piezo should have uh, you know, moved uh, to the desired distance uh, immediately and then it should flatten out, but no, no, it doesn't happen. Then you can see that it, uh, it is two steps. So once uh, there's a sudden movement in the piezo and so this, this y-axis has got both the units. You have voltage as well as distance. So voltage you apply, fine. But distance, you can see that it's slowly moving. That it's, okay. That will lead to the distortion here. So one should not do that. And you can see this is a problem with the creep. Uh, you, you suddenly apply the voltage because you have to move this tip up. So how do you move the tip up? Suddenly you apply the voltage because you, you saw suddenly this hill and you suddenly apply large voltage. So then the scanner keeps on moving upwards and then overshoots. And here also it understood because suddenly you have to move, reduce the voltage. Okay, so sharp features may have this undershooting and overshooting because of this scanner creep problem. Thermal drift uh, problem happens that uh, for high resolution imaging, wait for some time. Thumb rule of microscopy is that wait, do a slow scan and do the repeated scan. For very high uh, resolution, uh, I mentioned that uh, mostly uh, drift uh, takes a lot of time to stabilize. For example, you switch on the microscope, you switch on the air conditioner, then you should probably wait for entire day, ideally 24 hours, and then you just close the room Switch on, switch on everything and then shut the room. And then you come next day and then you will get very beautiful high resolution image. Very nice. If your tip is nice, if sample is good, no problem actually. Once you get used to it, uh, then uh, good, good uh, ambient, so air conditioning should be very good. It should not be fluctuating. You know, your uh, air conditioner temperature should not be fluctuating because air conditioner temperature is fluctuating. Like sometime it is 25 and then it became 28, then became 22, even though you set it to 22, but you set it to 22 doesn't mean that, okay, this is also following some kind of a temperature controller, your air conditioner. So uh, then it will have a problem of thermal drift in your scanner. Just remember, please remember that you are doing a high resolution microscopy. You're not doing mobile photography from your mobile phone. So please remember that uh, the electronic settings, uh, scanner settings are prone to change even when there is a small change in the temperature. Effect of cross coupling and uh, can also happen because there is a cross talk, which is very common, uh, okay, between X, Y, and Z. Ideally, ideally they should be electrically decoupled. X, Y, when you, when you apply voltage in X, Y, it should move in X, Y, and Z direction. But there can be some mechanical coupling because they, it's essentially it's a single tube. So um, that should be measured, okay? And the details are there. Uh, image processing uh, problem can be there, which we'll learn it more in the image processing part, but let me quickly cover it. Uh, labeling artifact, labeling artifacts are quite common. Uh, labeling, uh, as I mentioned that uh, you do a lot of 
uh, offline processing. Uh, so labeling artifacts, labeling changes the entire AF image. That this I will teach you in the uh, image analysis because then you can learn it when I do actual fitting. So when you're doing the fitting, uh, then uh, for example, uh, these are your uh, nanoparticles which are uh, unlabeled. Uh, and uh, this is very very common i mean this is 100 percent time you get this when you're trying to when you try to label so uh, you have to mask off these particles otherwise you will get this kind of streaks okay so you can see that uh, this background correction is required here because you cannot see some particles clearly for example you cannot see this particle clearly and you can see the background is too dark here and uh, is getting lighter here so that means this is uh, the substrate itself is bent actually so this is uh, higher in height and this is lower in height. So ideally I would like to do the polynomial background fit here. Uh, but if I do that, uh, that means I'm re uh, redux, uh, basically uh, removing some, uh, uh, removing some um, um, background from here, but I'm removing background from this particle and this particle. So that means you can see that there is a streak here. It's so common, I will show you this, this thing in software. But if you correctly do that, then you, uh, from this you can reach here. So you can see that background is uniformly dark and you see the particles nicely. This is a very common problem, very common problem. In fact, people publish it actually. I can show you many papers where uh, people just publish it with this, this kind of artifacts. Please don't get uh, surprised that, uh, don't be surprised that this is something which will not happen. This is so common actually. Filtering artifacts are very common, low pass filters and high pass filters. So a low pass filter tries to smoothen out any sharp feature. So for example, when you apply a low pass filter, uh, so then you may end up uh, modifying it actually. Okay, uh, so one has to be very, very careful. For example, when you, uh, for example, it, it requires some filter because you can see some noise here. But when you apply the filter, you may end up uh, changing the uh, height so you can see that this is 16 nanometer and this has come down to uh, 10 nanometer. So height reduction has taken place, which is not uh, good. So one should be avoiding that. Vibrations can happen and it, you can catch it in your noise, uh, uh, building vibrations normally. And uh, so building vibrations are normally below five hertz. Uh, so because it has low amplitude, this kind of artifact is most often noticed when imaging very flat samples, suppose you are measuring graphene and other things. So then you can uh, noticeably see uh, all kinds of people walking, people thumping, people, uh, you know, uh, talking. You can, when people walk or you know, in the next room, you can see the problem in the AFM. Immediately you will see the noise. You will see the lines appearing actually. And somebody, suppose somebody switch on lights in another room, uh, or switch off the lights, you will immediately see there is some noise uh, and you can see that, okay, this at this point, somebody switched on the light. Um, so uh, it's very nice example that this sample, this uh, AFM image was captured uh, when people were not talking. And uh, this was recorded when people were talking, actually, you can see the uh, amount of noise has gone up. You can see this is the amount of noise. So it's better to be silent in and around AFM room. Uh, so you don't create uh, noise. So you can see that suppose you're, uh, you can try that. So suppose you're capturing a final image and somebody knocked on the hood or somebody laughed, somebody slammed the door, somebody jump, was jumping on the floor, somebody was clapping, somebody was kicking the table. So you can see all kinds of noises coming, okay? So don't do that, don't laugh don't slam the door, don't jump on the floor, don't clap, okay? And never kick the AFM table, okay? And never kick your uh, partner also, okay? When you are imaging. So don't do that. Otherwise you will have these noise, noises actually. Hmm? So laughing, talking and all those things, activities are not allowed in the AFM room strictly, <laughs> okay? So you can see electro, uh, electronic noise, you can see the uh, vacuum leak problems and uh, anyway so there there are uh, 
all kinds of uh, uh, problems you can see and finally uh, sample related sample can be very loosely uh, held so uh, so sample displacement during imaging is a big problem due to sample environment heating cooling fluid cell suppose you are using sample in the fluid cell if you are a chemistry student sometimes you want to do uh, studies and in polymer in the fluid cell or you want to heat some polymers cool some polymers suppose you are a catalysis student you are changing the sample environment and then uh, because of the sample environment problem you may uh, end up uh, uh, basically changing the uh, image quality so that is that is the that is also quite uh, problematic that you can have sample drift uh, in the fluid cell or otherwise okay and another problem last this is the last slide probably that uh, if you apply too high force on the sample so for example this is a load force from the tip if its tip is scratching too too high you can see that you are removing the material so this is uh, at the low uh, load force and uh, when you apply high load force for 4.21 nanometer you can see that you have removed certain material and when you reduce the load force and you you reimage re this area you can see that you have removed a lot of area a lot of you can see this is the image area okay so you scan first 10 micron and then you zoom 5 micron and then you erase uh, you apply high load volt, uh, load value uh, high set point and then you zoom again uh, zoom out again 10 micron you can see that this patch which you just image with this uh, load force so please uh, be careful uh, here uh, some guidelines are there take more than one image of the same area or the same line to ensure that it looks the same when looking at the single uh, scan line profile during acquisition look if the traces are identical trace and retrace they should be identical it should be stable in the time then only one should go to the image uh, mode when you do the actual afm you will know what i meant actually Try changing the scan direction. I already told two, three times that uh, this is the most common precautions. Changing the scan size, uh, taking the image to ensure that the feature scale properly. For example, you uh, take a 10 micron image and you see some particle and then you should uh, uh, measure the dimensions of that particle and then you take uh, one micron image and that image particle dimension should look the same. So 500 nanometer feature should look the should look 500 nanometer on 10 micron by 10 micron image and uh, one micron by one micron image. So that also shows uh, scanner uh, is linearly calibrated. So that is the best way. That suppose you have a, you have one particle, different different scan size. Uh, it should uh, feature it should the length should be the same. Even if you rotate this, it should rotate actually. Okay, that can be. That's one of the smartest way to uh, look at uh, these three guidelines are quick guidelines to uh, check that there are artifacts. One is basically uh, changing the scan size and taking the image to ensure that feature should scale properly. Rotating the image, changing the scan speed because sometimes scan speed creates a lot of problems. So uh, with that, I end uh, uh, this uh, presentation, which was quite practical, uh, uh, right? And uh, let us, I, I think somebody's trying to uh, call me. So if you have any question, then I'll be happy to answer.